All right, we're going to uh, bring a jury in now. Um, Squadney, come on back up, please, if you would. Have a seat. <coughs> We're going to uh, bring a jury in now. Um, Squadney, come on back up, please, if you would. Have a seat. Session. Good morning, folks. Uh, Show on the record that all the jurors are present. <coughs> I suspect uh, a, a number of you are concerned about the weather, and I am too. Um, uh, we're going to try to get as much done today as we can. Uh, without we're in session. Good morning, uh, folks. Uh, Show on the record that all the jurors are present. Um, putting you in a situation in which you uh, will have. A I suspect. Um, a number of you are concerned about the weather, and I am too. Um, uh, we don't just rely on weather forecast. I mean, we rely. We're going to try to get as much done today as we can uh, without how um, we have the troopers all over the county unreasonably putting you in a situation in which you uh, will have a difficult time getting home. Um, so, and also, the obviously, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we don't just rely on weather forecast. I mean, we rely significantly on the high sheriff who has deputies all over the county, the highway patrol who have the troopers all over the county to tell us what it's like down in the southern part of the county, the northern part of the county, the western part of the county, the eastern part of the county. So, and also the adjoining county. So we kind of know, and then we'll let you know if it's coming, where it is, and when it's coming, and when we need to stop. If we so quit, please let us we'll be worry about that. You don't worry about that. I'm but it, to, yeah, not be a at some point, so, if, if uh, uh, the weather understand. is such that we need to stop, we certainly will. All right, um, and get you out of here. So uh, I believe you can get uh, home safely. Uh, and then we'll let you know uh, when we think Courtney we can start again. Yesterday, um, and if we if we just quit, uh, we'll be a day behind. And I'm trying to not be a day behind. So. Uh, Please understand. Uh, Gartney was on the stand yesterday, and I don't think we finished the direct. So, uh, you may proceed. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. That you typed up after you talked to I hung up with him a few minutes later, uh, Grant called me back. Yes. Um, to let me know that he was still trying to send me some email. Yes. And at the end of that conversation, um, what yeah. happened after you hung up with It was, uh, uh, well, he, after I hung up with him a few minutes later, Grant called me back. Um, to let me know that he was still trying to send me some emails, uh, but he was having trouble getting them to go through. Grant, did you give him your email address? Yes, I did. Yes, it was. After you talked with Grant, what did you do next in your investigation? Once he, J. Gortney at CI. Laura was Kinston. Last NC. US. That he saw her last in Raleigh. Then contacted Raleigh Police Department. This is on and, um, Monday, yes. July, Tuesday, is that right? Yes. Um, after you talk with Grant Hayes, what did you do next? Yes. Do you remember specifically who he spoke Once he, speak with him, and he said that Laura was the the last right known. Uh, um, did you brief them on um, the missing person cases you had at that point? Yes, I sat down in their office, in their homicide office, and, and briefed them on what we had. And 
Did you tell them about what it Grant had said? I did. And everything that <coughs> was collected as part of your investigation? Yes. Um, did you ever have um, occasion to talk to an SBI agent named Walita Chapman? Yes, I did. And when did you do that? I believe that was on the uh, 19th. Okay. And why did you talk to Agent Chapman? Uh, I talked to her for maybe to see if she, the SBI could do some limited assistance and help us as far as with maybe phone records and, and things like that. Um, did you ask the Raleigh Police Department uh, information about Laura's car? Yes. And what kind of car were you looking for? Uh, white Ford Focus. And um, after you gave her that information, after you talked to the, the Raleigh Police Department, was the next part of your investigation, did you help with a search warrant later that week? Yes, I did. Uh, the the case, our missing person case, um, was turned over to Raleigh. Uh, Raleigh executed a search warrant, wanted to execute a search warrant um, in Kinston. Uh, so basically what I did is I typed a search warrant. Um, I applied for the search warrant through our courts and just stood by while the Raleigh officers uh, searched the residence. And which residence was that? Laura's, at her apartment. And was that, uh, do you remember what day that was? On the 20th. Do you have questions? Uh, yeah, Sean, thank you. Sure. Uh, good, good morning. Is it Gortney or Gwok? Gortney. Gortney. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Detective Gortney. Good morning, sir. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, I believe that the first contact that you were aware of that in with the Kenston Police Department, not necessarily with you, but in your investigation, you were able to determine that there had been some report in the past about Laura having abused the children. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. And, and, and I don't think you didn't take that report personally, did you? No, sir. Uh, that was some other detective, and I apologize, I don't recall which detective took, took that report. But do you recall who it was? Detective Whitaker. Whitaker, okay. Uh, and what Grant had done was to accuse Laura of having done something to abuse the two boys. Yes, sir. And that was investigated, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And it was proven to be untrue. Yes, sir. Uh, in the process of doing that investigation, uh, you were able to determine later what Grant's telephone number was, weren't you? Yes. And that's how you knew to call him when you got the missing re missing re person report. You knew which telephone call number to call because it came from the previous report. Well, I, I didn't. I just the number was on there, so I just called it to see if it was still his. People change numbers, so I just took a shot, and and it was still his number. You, you took a chance, and it turned out to be that it was the same number that he was getting. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, now, when you when the Chevron Mathis came in to report that Laura was missing. I believe that was on July the 18th. Is that correct? Yes, Monday. Yeah. Uh, did you talk to her personally? I did. Uh, did you were you were here? I think yesterday when she testified. Yes, sir. If if I recall correctly, uh, do you recall that one of the things that she told you was that? Laura was very afraid of Grant. Yes, sir. And that she, she Laura, had told Chevron that if anything ever happened to her and she went missing or there was some problem of any kind, to go to the police and report to them to go look for Grant. Grant's the one that did. You recall that? I recall her testifying that she never told me that. She just told me that they had problems in the relationship. Okay. So as a result of something that she told you, you were prompt to make a telephone call to Grant? Well, yeah, just in any, in any normal investigation, I would contact her um, father of her children, family, immediate family. But, but yeah, I was prompted to call, to, after talking to her, to call Grant C because she was supposed to go pick up the children. And uh, as 
Laura Hatch shown on that Friday in Wilson to pick up the children. Correct. But so do you, Chevron was recognizing that there was some problem here. Yes, sir. Now, initially, this was treated as a missing first person report, correct? Yes, sir. So, so you didn't go to Raleigh at that time, and uh, or did you go to Raleigh and talk to the detectives here of, about Laura being missing? Correct. When I initially uh, started the investigation, it was a missing person. Um, once I began to build a timeline of where she'd been, um, the last known whereabouts, spoke with the people, uh, business owners in Wilson, and then once I spoke with Grant, the business people uh, that I spoke with in Wilson had saw her on the 12th. Then once I spoke with Grant on the phone, he said he saw her in Raleigh on the 13th. So at that point is when I contacted Raleigh because that was when she was last physically seen. When you talked to Grant on the telephone, uh, one of the things he told you was he was going to visit his family in New Jersey. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. Do you also recall him telling you or, or perhaps you overhearing on the phone as he was talking that one of the boys was pulling the cat's tail? Yes. So wherever he was, uh, he was with the, his children. Yes. And then at some point he said in the conversation, let me, let me step away from my children so that I can speak to you. Yes. Do you recall that? I do. Now, uh, after you talked to Grant on the telephone, is that when you went to Raleigh to talk to the detectives about what was happening? Well, I, after, right, after that, I spoke with him, um, and Grant told me that Laura had came to his apartment um, that evening. Um, on, uh, then that's when I contacted Raleigh to let him know that the missing person, last known whereabouts of her was in, in here in Raleigh. When you talk either on your own or when you talk to the Raleigh police officers, uh, did you make any inquiry into who, who Grant Hayes what really was? Uh, no. Through Raleigh? No. Well, either on your own or through Raleigh. Well, I pulled his information, and, and um, but as far as just his personal information and, you know, home addresses and former addresses and things like that. Okay. You didn't get into any of the background investigation at that point about his character? No. Uh, let me ask you, this. tell me a little bit about uh, uh, the kind of investigations that you conducted while you were with the Kensington Police Department. Um, I sp spent nine years working narcotics. Um, after narcotics, I went to general investigations where, uh, like I said, I invested all various types of uh, felony cases from um, felony assaults to homicide to armed robberies. Uh, just, you know, in, in, in our investigation division, we, we, weren't, we didn't have a specific, specific uh, homicide or anything. We just investigated whatever whatever was assigned to us at the time. Uh, how long did you investigate drug cases? Uh, about nine years. Now, I realize that you didn't initially obtain a lot of background information on Grant during the early stages of this investigation, but during the later stages, did you receive information that Grant was uh, heavily involved in uh, the use and sale of drugs? My investigation um, started at 1.30, and by 4 o'clock I had located that she had been, um, or by 5 o'clock, by done talking with Grant, um, I'd located that she was last known in Raleigh, and my, my investigation at that point was pretty much turned over to Raleigh. Uh, once I found that she was missing, reported missing in Kinston, I found out her last known, she was last known of whereabouts, last known alive in Raleigh, and my, then that part of my investigation was turned over. So I investigated everything that I came up with uh, basically was within about three and a half hours initially, and then I turned the, the case was turned over. So I didn't get into pulling up his background about if he had any drug use or anything like that, because in the initial investigation that had nothing to do with what I was doing. I was just trying to locate a missing person. Are you familiar with the system that drug dealers use, whereby 
they make efforts to conceal. Um, well, overall, let me, let me hear it. I haven't heard it. <clears throat> Finish the question, but I'll answer it till he finishes. You've done a lot of drug investigations. I have. Uh, and you know, or, or do you know, that drug dealers use various systems for concealing who it is they're talking to on the telephone. Also, Jackson, relevant. Uh, overall, you can answer. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, are you are you saying that they conceal who they're talking to or where they're talk, calling from, or? Well, they conceal everything that they can think of to conceal, essentially, don't they? Well, they try. Yes. And one of the things that they use is what we call. Uh, prepaid cell, cell phones. I, not just drug dealers, but a lot of people. Lot, lot of I, people. I have a prepaid phone. Right. And, but drug dealers do it because <coughs> the telephone numbers that they're assigned when they buy those phones are different than the phones that they normally use, aren't they? Yes. Another thing that they do is use a voicemail system to exchange messages with each other, isn't it? I, I assume they could. Uh, you indicated that when you first got the missing person report that you made a telephone call to, well, well, well let me back up. The first thing you did was determine what Laura's cell phone number was, is that correct? Yes. And her cell phone number was 252-548-1714, correct? Yes. Uh, and do you recall that the telephone number that you called Grant at from the Kinston Police Department was 917-744-7000? And, and if you don't recall that, you may I need to refer to your report. I know, but can you tell him where in his report it is? I mean, well, let, let, let me, yeah, I, I can get you there. I can get you yeah, there. I mean, I mean, this is not, why don't you help him out rather than have him look through a 20 page report trying to find a telephone number? Not me, I sure. Uh, Detective Wortney, let me ask you, if you will, to examine what I have marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number 35. Go over. Well, let, let, let's look first on page. Page two of this report. Call number thirty seven was a call made at four fifty nine PM on July the thirteenth, two thousand eleven. Is that correct? Yeah. And that was a call that was made from the well, I'm sorry, I said the, the call number 37, it's actually call number 58. You, do you see that you recognize Laura's telephone number on this report? Yeah. 252-541714. That's the number you identified as belonging to her. Do you see that at 
4.59 p.m. on that day that the number that she called was 917-744-7681. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Now let's go to page 10. Call number 236 made at Ju on July the 18th, 2011 at 5.47 p.m. Also to that same number, 917-744-7651, Grant's number. Right. The call, this is the call that you refer to as having made it. Right. Now, I believe that you said it, that the number was, the last two digits of the number were 59. This record shows that it's actually I mean, 60. 60. It's a rollover number, isn't it? I, yeah. And, and the call lasted for 35 minutes and 32 seconds. That's your, that's your call to Grant, wherever he was, on July the 18th, correct? Okay, yes. Well, let's go back to page two. We've already identified the call that Laura made to Grant at 459, correct? Right? On the 13th, yes. On the 13th, 459, Laura has called Grant at, at his cell phone number. Yes. The next call after... Your Honor, I object. At this point, that's hearsay because it hasn't been a Overall, go ahead. The next call that Grant made after he talked to Laura was to a number 201-310-3595. Am I correct? Yes. And of course, you didn't participate in this investigation. So you don't know who that phone number belongs to, do you? Correct. And as you skip on down here, you see that at 6.37 p.m. on that day, July 13th, that Grant called Laura again. Yeah. Objection, Your Honor. I, I don't know who he called. He, he called a number. He called Laura. Well, sustained to the, who he called. You can make reference to a number. Sorry. Did he call the number that you identified as belonging to Laura? The 1714. Yeah. 152-548-1714. Yes. Grant called Laura. But 6.37 p.m. Yes. Am, am I reading this correctly? No, I can say it's just a little small. It, it, it's, it is very small, and, and uh, it's a little, little difficult to read numbers. But do you see that it's 6.37 p.m. that Grant has called Laura Selvin? Yes. Do you see that the next call, number 63, on July 13th, six, at 6.49 p.m., that Grant has again called Laura. Objection, Your Honor. Phone it's Grant's number has called Laura. That sustained to the form, one number called another number. Do you see that the number that you called and where you contacted Grant called the number that belongs to Laura? Yes. Okay. Then also at 6.59, you see a call from someone who, from the 252 area code to the number that belongs to Grant, correct? Yes. The next time you see a phone call made from Grant's cell phone number or the number that you contacted Grant at, that 917 exchange, was once again to that 201-310-3595 exchange, correct? Correct. The number, at, at least for the moment, we don't know who that is, do we? No. 
between 6.59 p.m. that day and 8.42 p.m. that day, no one made any calls from the number that Grant was using and no one called Grant at that number, did they? No, there's nothing on And now dropping on down to 11. 29, you see the, the number that has been assigned to Grant has made another number to another call to the 252 exchange, correct? Yes. Again, 11.49 p.m. That number that he had just called returns a call to him. You see that? I see. Telephone, it went to Grant's telephone number. During those last two calls on July the 13th, just before midnight, he talked for a total of almost 17 minutes to someone at those two numbers. Jackson of the Heat. Well, sustained. Let me, let me ask, ask you this. I think you already uh, told me this, but uh, let me clarify. The 201 exchange is a number that you have no idea who that is or who it belongs to, do you? No. Or why he's using it? No. Are you aware that when you call a voicemail system that you have set up that you and I, if we set up a voicemail system so that you and I can exchange voicemails, that I can call and leave messages on that voicemail system. Yeah. Sure. And you, likewise, can call and leave with that same voicemail system from some telephone number that none of us know about out there in the world anywhere and leave a message on that voicemail system. Are you aware? No, I'm not aware, but I'm sure. And that the two of you, you Jackson, your honor said it wasn't aware. Um, sustained. You're, you're aware that people in the drug world use voicemail systems to exchange messages without leaving a trail on these records of who they talk to? No. Well, when you call that voicemail system, the number that gets recorded on these telephone records is the voicemail number, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I don't understand what you're saying. Are you, they're calling a voicemail. Is it a voicemail number? They're, they're calling a voicemail number, and the number that gets recorded on the telephone records is a voicemail number. I don't know. You, you don't know how the system works no. for recording telephone numbers and telephone calls if you're trying to bypass the record keeping system? No. All right, uh, any further questions? Yes, Your Honor. Executive Board, did you try to call Laura Ackerson's cell phone? Yes. Did you get a voicemail? Yes. Do you believe she was a drug dealer based off that? No. Can I have a witness? Sure. Did Executive Board and Ashley, Defendants Exhibit 35 for identification purposes, had you seen this before today? No. Did you have anything to do with getting this? No. Do you have any idea um, whose numbers these are and, and who made these calls? No. When Mr. Gaskins was up here asking about these specific calls, besides what he told you, did you know that information? No. Your Honor, can I Sure.
Detective Courtney, do you have your report in front of you? Yes. Does that one number is on the top right corner? Uh, yes. Could you turn to page 1809? Okay. Did you write down, as part of your investigation, did you write down some numbers that you believe were Grant and Amanda's phone numbers? Yes. Okay. And what were those numbers? I have uh, 917-744-8581 and 744-7651. And where did you get those numbers? Um, from Grant's mother, Patsy. Do you, as part of your, I guess, day long or day and a half investigation in this case, did you, um, by contacting Grant Hayes and getting his voicemail, did you believe him to be a drug dealer? No. Do you have any evidence that he was a drug dealer? No. Nothing further. Anything else? At that point, you had not obtained a great deal of information about Grant Hayes. At the. the you had, at that point, you had not obtained a great deal of information about Grant Hayes. At what point, sir? At, at the point that uh, you made that first phone call to him. No. In, in fact, you, I take it, never really obtained a lot of information about Grant. Your investigation ended that day. Yes. You turned it over to the Raleigh Police Department. It's, yes. And it was the Raleigh Police Department who followed up on conducting the investigation into Grant's background. Uh, yes. Did, 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 you, did you even know that he was a mu musician who played gigs at nightclubs and restaurants and so forth? Uh, well, not through the investigation. I mean, I'd, I'd heard his name through around town, but I, I didn't know anything. You know, I didn't. Okay, okay. so your, your, your part in the investigation was very limited. Yes. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Um, is that your document or his? All right. Uh, also, just for clarification, uh, um, when you spoke to Grant Hayes, um, did he say anything or create any impression in your mind as to where he was when you were talking to him and he was talking to you? Yeah, my impression when we were first speaking that he was in Raleigh and that he was going to be coming to Kinston to sit down with it, do an interview with me when we originally were speaking. Um, that was my impression that, that we were going to sit down at some point and, and talk uh, because he said he was moving. He was in the process of moving from Raleigh to Kinston to his mother. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. You may stand down. The witness is excused. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next witness, please. Uh, this time, the state will call Lolita Chapman to the stand. Okay. Ms. Chapman, if you would uh, remain standing and take your oath, uh, please. Put your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand, face the clerk. Do you solemnly swear to testimony and give this court the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you, Honor. Would you state your name, please? Lolita Chapman. And how are you employed? I'm a special agent with the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation assigned to the Medicaid. I was with the Kinston Police Department for 14 years. And um, after you went um, with the SBI in 2008, um, can you describe what your duties and responsibilities um, were as a special agent with the um, North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation? And at this point, I'm talking specifically about the time period uh, being in July of 2011. I was the um, um, agent assigned to Green and Lenore County. Um, I was a field agent, criminal investigator. Okay. And when you say Lenore County, is, is Kinston actually located in Lenore County? It is. And when you say you were um, the field agent assigned to um, those particular counties, what what did that involve being a criminal agent for those two counties with the SBI? I would assist um, the local local agencies um, with criminal investigations. I will also work um, officer involved shootings or any type of specials we have. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, I will um, assist the agency with um, criminal investigations, um, also involved shootings and any type of specials that they have. And when you say any type of specials that they have, special types of investigations? Yeah, anything that was limited assistance that they didn't need, a, um, basically anything that they needed help with, like interviews, anything that wasn't a full investigation that the SBI was conducting. So there would be certain assistance that you would provide to law enforcement agencies where you would not take over as, as the agent, but you would actually assist with whatever the local agency's needs were? Right, correct. How is, how is it that you would become involved in a, in a local investigation in an assistance capacity? Um, by me being from there, they will call me and basically ask me if I could um, help for a short period of time with interviews or um, anything they needed. And I would go to the police department and see what they needed and just assist them. Was that typically a, a manpower issue that, that they needed you? Um, it could be a manpower issue or, um, yes ma'am. Did you become involved in an investigation um, with the Kinston Police Department on Tuesday, July the 19th um, of 2011? I did. And that Tuesday, how was it that you, you became involved in that investigation? What requests were made of you? Um, Sergeant, well, Commander Kennedy of the Investigations Division, um, I went to the, invest, to the police department that day and she asked me if I could help them into this investigation by interviews, um, looking at phone records. Um, just seeing what I can assist them, you know, trying to find Laura. Now, at that time, was this a, a homicide investigation or was it still a missing person's investigation? It was a missing person. And what information did, did you have um, at the time that you began um, assisting with this investigation? Um, I went down there. I talked to Detective Gordon. He um, told me what was going on. We looked at phone records um, dealing with Laura. Um, we went to her apartment. Um, I conducted some interviews, and um, that's basically it. Um, so at that point, you you knew that um, Laura Ackerson had was missing, and that um, she had been residing in, in Kinston. Correct. You indicated that you assisted with looking through phone records. Um, were those phone records for Laura's phone? Yes. Um, and when you say you assisted, what, what exactly did you do with regard to her phone records? Um, I did a timeline to see her, um, her whereabouts. Um, talked to some people on the phone that she had talked to. Um, I talked to um, her mother. Well, I didn't know it was her mother, but the numbers I called, one was her um, mother. I talked to her friends, and I also spoke to some people in her church some restaurant people where apparently she had went to um, talk to about her business. I spoke to some of them. And were you focused on focusing at that time on a particular time period? I was. And what time period were you focusing on? Um, the time period that was indicated in the records and um, what I did was the last time or the last call that she made, I sort of worked myself back. So you were able, from looking at her phone records, to determine the last phone call that had been made from, from Laura Ackerson's phone? Right. And do you recall when that was? I'm believing that was on the, I can't say right off the top, I think it was the 13th, I believe. And so you began working from that last phone call backwards a, a day or so? Right. You indicated that you, um, went to, to Laura Ackerson's apartment. Where was that located? It was located on North Heritage Street at Nantucket um, Law of Apartments. And that's previously been described as a kind of a converted warehouse that has retail and, and apartments that are located there. Right. Um, and, and what was the purpose in you going to Laura's apartment? Because my understanding was that um, law enforcement had not been to her apartment yet. So we were just basically wanting to go see um, basically was she there and to locate anything that we could out of the apartment. And at this point, still a, a missing persons investigation? Correct. And did you actually go to um, her apartment at Nantucket Law Apartments um, on that Tuesday? I did. July the 19th? I did. And um, who else went with you? 
mean Detective Gordon and Commander Kennedy? And um, with regard to, to getting um, to that apartment building, was that something that you could actually walk up to an apartment door? Did you have to have some assistance to actually get into the, the hallway? We had to have assistance. And, and who helped you with that? The property manager was there. And is that because the outside doors were secure? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Um, with regard to, to Laura's apartment, um, was that, that building, was it multi-floors? It is. And, and what floor was her apartment located on? The second. And what was the, the first thing you did once you got inside her apartment? Um, we went to her apartment. We talked to the property manager briefly, then we went up to her apartment. Okay. And um, when, you, when you went inside, um, did you um, notice anything out, out of place or anything that was important to you to, to pay attention to with regard to her apartment? We did. Okay. Can you describe for the jury kind of the layout of that apartment, what you, what you observed? Um, when you go in through the front door to the left um, is a kitchen area. If you go back, it's like a um, dining room, living area, or living room area combo. Um, if you go to the left of that, um, her kids' bedroom was on the left. If you go straight, her bedroom was right in front of the door, I guess leading from the combo living room area. And then on the right, I believe it was the bathroom. And then if you go in her room, if you go to the left, it's like a closet. And so this was basically a, a two bedroom, one bath um, apartment? Yes, ma'am. And when you say her bedroom and the boys' room, could you, could you tell those things about how they were furnished and the, the items that were, were in those areas? Yes, ma'am. In her boys' bedroom, she had toddler beds, and um, it was like a kid's room. And in her room, you know, it was an adult room, things that could be in an adult room. And, and did you notice, um, what specifically did you notice with regard to, to the apartment, whether or not um, it appeared that anybody would have been in there recently. Can you request please? Yes, yeah, what, what did you observe in the apartment? Um, I observed specifically items or? Um, well, for instance, did you observe that there were plants in the apartment? Yes, ma'am. Did they plant. appear to have been watered recently or taken care of? Um, I, can't, I can't remember. Okay. Did you um, see certain items from, from the apartment? I did. Can you? Well, I didn't them? seize them. You and other officers that were working there? Commander Kennedy did, yes ma'am. Okay. What, what items were seized from the apartment? Um, a planner, well, a diary type planner and a laptop computer. And do you recall where those items were seized from? The computer was seized from a desk that was in Laura's room, believed to be Laura's room, and the planner was seized from a table beside her bed. Did the apartment appear to be um, disheveled or ransacked or, or anything like that? No, it looked lived in. Okay. And, and was that one of the things you were looking for to, to examine the apartment and kind of the condition of the apartment? Yes, ma'am. No, that person witness. You may.
Agent Kennedy, I'm sorry, Agent Chapman, I'm handing you what has been marked for identification purposes as State's Exhibits 14 through 30. I'm ask you to take a moment and um, look at those items. You don't know why she's doing that, may I approach the clerk? You may. Agent Chapman, have you had a chance to look through um, sex exhibits 14 through 29? Yes, ma'am. And do you recognize those? Yes, ma'am. And, and what are sex exhibits 14 through 29? Photographs of Laura's apartment, inside Laura's apartment. And the sex exhibits 14 through 29 uh, fairly and accurately represent Laura's um, apartment at Nantucket Loft Apartments, as you observed um, it on July the 19th, that, that Tuesday when you went in? Yes, ma'am. Would they assist you in illustrating the testimony about the condition of that apartment, the, the items that you found, and where you found them? Yes, ma'am. At this time, the state would move to introduce into evidence states exhibits 14 through 29. Let me be pursued. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? You may. Agent Chapman, I'm handing you or placing before you what has been marked as states exhibit number 30A. Um, do you recognize that item? Yes, ma'am. And what is State's Exhibit 30A? It was a computer that was found in Laura's apartment, or taken from her apartment. And um, does it appear to be in the same condition as when it was seized on, on July the 19th? Yes, ma'am. Now, at this time, the State would move to introduce into evidence State's Exhibit 30A. Let it be received. You may. Agent Chapman, I've handed you what has been marked for identification purposes as State's Exhibit A31 and ask if you recognize that item. I do. And what is State's Exhibit A31? It's a, um, the item that was in Laura's apartment. It's a diary. And is that the, the diary that you referred to earlier that was um, seized by um, you mm -hmm. and, and other officers there at the scene? Yes, ma'am. And does it appear to be in the, the same condition as when you seized it? Yes, ma'am. Now, at this time, the state would move to introduce into evidence state's exhibit A31. I've been received. Now, at this time, I would ask permission to publish on the, the screen um, state's exhibits 14 through 29. All right, you may. Go ahead. Agent Chapman, um, on the screen, um, mm -hmm. it's going to be displayed um, State's Exhibits 14 through 29. Do you, do you see that up there on the screen? Yes, ma'am. And with regard to State's Exhibit number um, 14, can you explain what's depicted here? Um, the kitchen. It's the kitchen. As um, soon as you come in through the front door, it's the kitchen area. So the front door, from this vantage point, would be behind you? Yes, ma'am. Um, back towards the, the refrigerator area? Yes, ma'am. Towards the front door. Yes, ma'am. Um, can I may approach the witness with a pointer? You may. Okay, the front door will be over here on this area. State's exhibit number 16. Um, can you describe what's depicted here? It's the dining limp well, was the dining area, but it's also a living room also. And the, the kitchen area that we've just seen, where is that in, in relation to this photo? Back this area. 
this area down in here. And there um, appear to be some some papers that are located on the, the dining room table. Is that how how that existed when you came in into that area? Yes, ma'am. Dates exhibit number sixteen. Um, what what's shown in this photo? Um, a calendar. What? Well, yeah, a calendar with timeline a timeline along the side of it. And I believe this actually is States Exhibit 17. Um, States Exhibit number 18. Um, is that actually a, a closer up um, view of that, that calendar area? Yes, ma'am. And um, is there a date in the, the upper corner? Yes, ma'am. July the, well, 7, 7, 11. Okay, so July the 7th. Yes, ma'am, 2011. Okay. And with regard to um, kind of that third column over where it says appointments, do you see that part? Yes, ma'am. And um, in terms of what, what's written under that, that third column, can you describe that for the jury? Okay. Everything in the third column? Yes, ma'am. Okay, drop. Let me read it. The third column, which says appointments at the top, okay. Is that where you're looking? Mm -hmm. Okay. Siobhan at five o'clock. Walmart pool return five thirty. Six o'clock call boy, boys. Um, 6.15, I think she talking about Pitt Community College, I'm assuming it's P, Pitt CC, and um, she has a line drawn down until 10 o'clock. And then the, the column before that that has appointments, do you see, so it will be the second column, you see at 11 a.m. there's a notation? Yes, ma'am, call boys. Okay. States exhibit number 19, um, what, what's shown in this photo? Flowers or plants. Okay. Were they located in the um, living room area? Yes, ma'am. Um, State number 20. Is this another photo of the living room area? Yes, ma'am. State exhibit number 21. What's, what are we seeing here? It's the same living room area, but it's off to the left of um, the other picture. So it's, just, it's in the same area. And so that from this area being the kitchen and the, the living room area, um, were there were any items um, seized at the time that you went through from these two rooms? No, ma'am. Um, State exhibit number 22. That's um, the uh, kids or well, her boys room. Um, and State exhibit number 23. What's shown in this photo? Um, it's the area also in the boys room. And it's also a picture of um, Grant Hayes and Laura on the kids' table. And can you point that out? Right here. State exhibit number 24. What, what are you showing in this picture? It's the picture um, inside Laura's bathroom. And it has, I guess, some um, makeup items right there in her bag. And. Is that the location where those items were found, that the makeup bag on the edge of the kitchen, I'm sorry, on the bathroom sink? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Say this is at 25. What is showing this photo? Oh, 20. It's the closet area in Laura's bedroom. And is this actually standing from the, the bed area and looking um, kind of down, <laughs> down into the closet? Yes, ma'am. Say this is at 26. What's shown here? This is the um, also in Laura's bedroom on the other side of the bed, which would be opposite end from the closet. 
and what what is shown in this particular part of the bedroom? Um, her bed, a chair, a small table right there, um, and her um, desk. And are you able to, to show on State Exhibit 26 the area from which um, the, the computer, um, State Exhibit 30A, was recovered? Yes, ma'am, from this area right here. And are you also able to use State's Exhibit um, 26 to show the area that the um, journal or diary um, that's been um, State's Exhibit 31 been introduced? Uh -huh, right here, there? right there on that table. So in these photos, the, the computer and the journal have, have been removed? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 27? It's the desk. Her desk that was in the room. And the, the computer, when it was recovered, where was it? Sitting? In this area, right here of the desk. <laughs> the state's exhibit 28. Um, is that kind of a better picture of that <coughs> bedside table where the, the journal or diary was found? Yes, ma'am, right there. State's exhibit 29. That's the um, inside Laura's closet, um, her jewelry or earrings right here. All right, Agent um, Chapman, I wanted to, um, you indicated that you went into the, the apartment, um, you didn't notice anything, um, it didn't appear to be ransacked or anything like that, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you, um, from there, where did you go? Did you have any further work that you did on this investigation? Um, I interviewed um, the maintenance man. He had a conversation with Laura the last time he saw her. And I also interviewed some of her friends. I did interviews basically from there. Okay. And were those um, primarily people that you got from her phone records that she had called <coughs> recently? Yes, ma'am. But did it also include um, Barbara Patty? Yes, ma'am. And, and who was Barbara Patty? She was one of her church members. And had she actually been listed as a mentor person on the apartment lease? She had been. And did you see um, apartment um, managers there? Yes, ma'am. And was all this an attempt to, to gather information about Laura and when she had last been seen? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit um, 31, the, the diary um, that, that you have um, there in front of you, do you, do you see that? Yes, ma'am. Um, have you had a chance to, to look through um, that diary and see, um, in general terms, what, what type of information is contained in it? Um, yes, ma'am. And can you describe that for, for the jury? Basically, it's a log of um, Laura, what she did. It basically every day she documented um, if she had any type of interaction with anybody, um, phone calls she made, um, anything dealing with her, her boys, or um, anyone she spoke, spoke to um, when she talked to Grant or when she would drop off the kids, the interaction they would have. You know, she documented a lot. And were you aware at, at the time that that journal um, or diary was seized that um, there was a, a custody dispute that was ongoing related to um, Grant and General. Yes, ma'am. I got information from the police department. And so this this <coughs> journal was um, something that um, you all thought was important as part of this investigation and, and learning kind of about Laura's movements and who she may be having contact or encounters with. Yes, ma'am. Um, the the first page of of that journal. Um, how was it, um, what's the title? Phone call log. And what's, um, are there various dates that are noted throughout throughout the journal? It is. And what's the, the first date that's noted there? August the 11th, 2010. And um, in terms of the phone call log, does um, there appear to be writing as to, to the purpose of the, the journal and, and what type of information will be in it? Yes, ma'am. And can you read that for the jury? Phone call log.
Prior to recording this log, I have observed several things when talking to my boys uh, via Grant's cell phone. Frequently, there are new voices, and generally there are one or two. Most times, the volume in the home is very loud, making it hard to hear gentle and Grant. This is either due to the TV or restaurant noises or Grant's music. When Amanda answers, when Amanda answers, it is usually quiet. The purpose of this log is to record observations and note patterns as well as anything abnormal or negative. And with regard to, you indicated the first entry was um, August the 11th of 2010. Yes, ma'am. And do, are there days, um, many days in which there are several entries? Turn your attention, um, Agent Chapman, to August the 23rd um, of 2010, um, 1147 a.m. Do you see that, um, an entry for that date and time? August the 23rd, 2010, 1147 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, in terms of, of that entry beginning beginning Amanda, can you read that to the jury? Amanda called me today, called me psycho crazy, because I didn't have anything better to do with my time than to research crap on the internet. And then she got RE group. I called her back after she hung up on me and told her that what she did was inappropriate that she was still new to the situation. She was upset because of the email I sent to Grant about crap, I guess that. Is that croup? Croup, okay, croup. Please note that in the email, there are ifs and if necessaries. She told me that the kids didn't have a virus, they had a cold, and that I am always bringing them home ill because I take them to the water park and let them be wet all day long. She told me that she was responsible for my kids now because I'm psycho crazy. I am certain Grant has given her the scenario that I am wacko and she needs to help him, she needs to help him protect the kids from me. Following that entry for August the 23rd, 2010 at 11.47 um, a.m., is there a, another entry at 1.53 p.m. for that same day, August the 23rd? It is. And um, at 1.53 p.m., uh, what's the last sentence of that entry? Shaken by Amanda's call. And, and so the, um, that last line, um, does that actually, <coughs> the sentence actually began the line before that. I was still. Okay. I was still a bit shaken by Amanda's call. And then at 7.09 p.m. on that same day, being August the 23rd, 2010, um, is there an entry um, at that time? That it is. is. Okay. And can you um, describe that entry? Brief call, still leery because of Amanda. And then the following day, um, August the 24th of 2010, um, is there an entry for 12.12 p.m. on that day? Yes, ma'am. Can you um, read that entry? Um, very brief call, again, leery because of Amanda. Um, turn your attention to September the 7th of 2010, 9-7-2010. Do you see an entry for 11-12 a.m. on that day? I do. Um, and can you read that entry? Amanda was teaching the boys new words like iguana. It was good to hear the interaction and I was also felt unreliable because their attention was not focused on the phone. 
I think video chats would be more effective at catch, capturing the boys' attention and creating reserve time for us each day. Um, Agent Chapman, is, is that um, entry saying I also felt irrelevant? Irrelevant, okay. <sighs> Turning your attention to um, September the 14th of 2010 at 7 p.m. Do you see that entry? I do. Um, can you read that, that entry, please? Say goodnight to the boys. Say goodnight to boys. They were eating dinner. It would be nice if I could talk with Grant in a manner about compatible times for them to be for them times for them for me to call um even if i try to speak to them i get zero response turning your attention um agent chapman um, a couple pages over for an entry um, september the 23rd of 2010 at 3 47 in the afternoon Say that again. 9, 923, September 23rd of 2010 at 347 in the afternoon. Okay. I got it. Okay. Um, can you read that entry, please? No interaction with me. I overhear she's planning with the boy That's saying. Shay playing with the boy? Okay, Shay. Playing with the boy saying, I'm going to get you, get her. I can't, I don't know what that word is. Getcha. Getcha. Go ahead. Although I am happy that the boys are having a good time, I still wish that Grant, the, it's a, I don't know if that's the fourth or the third, value and encourage my time with the boys, regardless of what it means to him. He has gotten Amanda so worked up towards me that now. Let me go to the second page. Yeah. Instead of giving me a report on the kids, she looks at me with this a this a day disdain this disdain. In the beginning of this, she was telling me that things would get better as time went on. I told her that she still didn't know Grant. At Gentle's first hospital date, she will eventually. She will eventually. He hasn't ch changed a single step of the step of his game as far as I can see. But anyway, no interaction from the boy short call. And this um this journal or notebook, um can, can you hold that can you hold that up? And are there um, tabs, like multicolored tabs, that are that are on the, the notebook at various locations? Yeah, yeah, along the side. And was that how it was found, um, with, with all those areas tabbed? Yes, ma'am. So that wasn't anything that, that you added or any of the officers added? That was how it, how it was in, in Laura's home? Yes, ma'am. Hey, man. Chapman, I um, turn the pages to the to the journal to a, a page on the top which says Friday, and there's actually one of those little tabs that's covering um, the date. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Can you remove the tab and, and see what the date is underneath? September 10th, 2010. 
um, looking at the entry for, for that day, September the 10th, 2010, that Friday, um, going down to the basic with the last paragraph on that page that begins with gentle awoke with tears and fretfulness. Mm -hmm. um, would you begin reading there? Gentle awoken again with tears and fretfulness again while he was here. While he was here, I had him tested for bladder infection. He was clear, still wondering what was going on with him. I'm afraid to, it's Evie, I don't know, ever. I'm assuming that is, I don't know what that word is. Afraid to. Okay, and then going on to the next page. Approached the subject with Grant and Amanda that acted as as though I don't exist. Keep on. Yes. I have toned nothing. I have done nothing to Amanda and have acted as though Grant acted the way he did while he was with me. But to them, I am psycho crazy. He is so discouraging to deal with. Them with my children. Does I say, does that say it is so discouraging to deal okay, with. Okay, it is. Oh, I thought it was here. It is so discouraging to deal with them with my children. I encourage the boys to live, to love their daddy and the man. I wish I had a picture of both of them for the boys' room. He would be less of a <coughs> oddity than mama and daddy's picture. Okay, and you previously had seen, seen in the boys' room a picture of Laura and Grant between their, their beds. Is that right? Yes, I did. Turning your attention to um, the page labeled 926-2010, Sunday, you see that at the top of the page? Mm -hmm. and there are um, several page um, entry regarding that day. It is. And turn your attention to the, the second page, um, and there's a, this weekend was terrible, the second paragraph down. On what page? The first page? Second page. Do I approach? You may. Do you see the um, paragraph beginning, this weekend was terrible as far as Grant the third is concerned? Mm -hmm. Can you um, begin reading there? This weekend was terrible as far as Grant the Third is concerned. Last weekend, Amanda and I were able to talk joyfully about Grant the Four. Gentle, this weekend, Grant the Third destroyed that. Whatever relationship I had left with his mom, he sent me a text on Saturday. We picked up boys. We, pick, we will pick boys up in Kinston tomorrow, Saturday, September 25, 2010 at 2.01 p.m. I didn't. I did not reply as I didn't know how I would handle this situation yet. Either way, I lose. On Saturday at 1:18 p.m., he sent McDonald's. He sent McDonald's or behind your building. I called him, recorded it, and told him that I appreciated his generosity for wanting to give me an extra hour with the boys, but I will be following the 
the court order. If I follow the court orders, if I follow the court order of said Grant, his mom Amanda and Shay, if I make them happy, I show that I am okay with breaking the court order. Turning your attention, um, Agent Chapman, to October the 24th, 2010 entry. Across the top of the page where it says October 24, 2010, Sunday. I have it. Um, and do you see the paragraph um, about a little more than halfway down that begins, I ran 15 minutes late. <coughs> Okay, I do. Would you begin reading there? I ran 15 minutes late to drop the boys off, and Amanda treated me as though I had a habit of it. Being late isn't an acceptable practice, but it happens. She scolded me in front of my children. I found it, I found it off, putting, putting it bothers me that she is fine showing that type of emotional emotion towards Go to the next page. Yes. So I lose until we get to court, I, I hope. Turning your attention, um, Agent Chapman, to October the 24th, 2010 entry. Across the top of the page where it says October 24, 2010, Sunday. I have it. Um, and do you see the paragraph um, about a little more than halfway down that begins, I ran 15 minutes late? <coughs> okay, I do. Would you begin reading there? I ran 15 minutes late to drop the boys off and Amanda treated me as though I had a habit of it. Being late isn't an acceptable practice, but it happens. She scolded me in front of my children. I found it, I found it off, putting, putting it bothers me that she is fine showing that type of emotional emotion towards. Go to the next page. Yes me in front of the children. This isn't the first time either. Remember the Kinston pickup? Amanda and Grant the third have been late to a drop off before, but I didn't make a big deal out of it. And so throughout this, um, this journal or diary, um, the reference is to Grant the third um, being Grant Hayes the adult. Is that, is that right? Is that how you understood it? Yes, ma'am. And Grant the fourth being the, the child. Yes, ma'am. Um, turning your attention um, finally to October um, the 29th of 2010, an entry um, on Friday. You see that about the one that's about halfway down the page that begins, I talk, talk to the man. Okay. You see that? Yes, ma'am. Um, would you read that entry, please? I talked with Amanda today at Sheik's in Wilson about her emotional outbursts. I told her I was concerned about her frequent negative emotional outbursts towards me in front of Grant the fourth and gentle. And then she got number one in their SUV in front of Patsy and Grant's Junior's house. You started this. She angrily yelled at me over Grant the fourth's head. I had I had put gentle with a friend of him too, and she thinks I started this. And then the, the next page, if you'll read to about halfway down that page. Number two of halfway of uh, number two, her phone call may not have been in front of Grant and Gentle. Um, number three, Kinston pickup in Wilson. Number four, when I was late, 15 minutes, etc. She seemed unconcerned with Grant the fourth or gentle, but very happy just to defend herself. Then she suggested that we just don't 
we just didn't talk at all. I got the impression that she was implying a threat with this more so than a suggestive. I expected her to be more mature. I don't know why she wants my kids so badly. She definitely doesn't, does not seem to have their needs placed in front of her own. And Agent um, Chapman, basically you've, you've read from various um, entries um, from this diary, and it, it continues on um, with various dates and, and entries um, related to um, interaction between Laura and, and Grant and Amanda and, and the boys. Is that right? Yes. Um, does it go continuously with regard to date, or is there a, um, a time period where the um, it basically skips? Is it pretty much continuous um, until March the fifth, March the fourteenth of two thousand and eleven, and then picks back up on July the first of two thousand and eleven? March the thirteenth, two thousand. Well, March the fourteenth, two thousand and eleven. And then the next entry after that would be July, July the first, two thousand and eleven. Um, what is the the final date uh, that there was an entry uh, in, in your journal? July the 12th, 2011. Um, and could you, um, could you read that, that entry from July the 12th, 2011? Does that also reflect that a Tuesday up in the... It does. Um, Tuesday, July the 12th, 2011. I picked the boys up from up a few hours early on Friday and dropped them off on the regular schedule, 5 p.m. at Sheik's on Sunday. We had a good weekend playing in the bounce house at the park and playing at home. We went shopping and the boys were helpful. We went to a different church this past Sunday and they went to the children's church with no issues. At about 6.30 p.m. today, I called the boys like normal. When I got off the phone with them, it was because Grant the fourth had to say bye. It's on recording number 53, side A. It was again, he was again watching TV when I called. Agent Chapman, as part of the um, search of the, the house, you indicated that, that you seized the, the computer that's um, there in front of you, states exhibit number 30A, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you find a reporter? Um, there in, in the apartment? I don't recall calling, no. <laughs> Did you yourself undertake to do any examination of that, that computer and any material that might be um, on that? No, I didn't. And so was your role with, with other officers basically to, to seize that and, and pass it on um, in this investigation, the computer? Say that again. Your role is basically to seize it and give it to others um, investigating this matter, is that right? As, as opposed to doing your own um, examination of the computer. I didn't seize the computer. They they took it and they did what I guess needed to be done with it. Okay, the Kenson Police Department. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, that's all I have. Questions? Yes, yes. thank you. Uh, um, I participated. Um, with the phone records, the going to the apartment, and some interviews. Did you ever take part in the investigation once it switched from Kenston to Raleigh? No, sir. So your apartment was in Kenston? Yes, sir. And, and, and your actual station at Greenville? Excuse me? Your station at Greenville, is that correct? Greenville, North Carolina. The district office is in Greenville, but I'm assigned to Green and Lenore County. So, so you actually worked Green County and Lenore County? I did, yes, sir. Uh, did you have any opportunity to obtain any information after the 
the initial things that you did there, stand there attention to either the Wally Police Department or any other investigative agencies of that grant? No, sir. Did you ever have an opportunity to read a parenting history survey that was prepared by Laura Ackerson for the use of Dr. Calvin? No, sir. And you're not familiar with the references that Laura made in that parenting history of that grant and his controlling measure? No, sir. Do you have any information about that Laura reported to Dr. Calvin to the effect that grant Objection, she's indicated she's not familiar with that report. Well, finish the question. Go ahead, finish the question. Do you have any information from any source, either the parents and history source or otherwise, that grant was constantly trying to stir the pot? No, sir. Object and move to strike. Um, Sustain the form of the question. I don't know what stir the pot means. Sustain the form of the question. Go to your next question. You indicated that I think on August 10, 2010, that, um, that Laura had reported in her diary that Amanda had called her psycho crazy because she was spending too much time Internet that would be August of, what's the date again? I think you said August 10th, uh, I may be wrong that. August 10th, 2010. Not of 10, sir. Not of 10? Yes. Sir. What? Well, the essence of it was that Amanda had called for a psycho crazy because she was spending too much time on the computer researching the uh, meaning of proof. C R O U C. -E. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're not familiar, I take it, with the same reference that Laura made. In her history. No, sir. Go ahead. Did 
July the 5th, 2011, on a Tuesday? Tuesday, July 5th. I have it, yes, sir. Would you read that answer? The weekend, if anyone touched his or General's wee wee, and he said no. They play ace, compassions, compasses, and how popsicles are made. The boys got along really well. We use a system, star charts that improved our interactions greatly. Both boys loved filling their closet up. Gentle was they almost gentle was dry almost the whole time. Are you asking me whether she whether she was at the apartment? She's indicated that she has gone voluntarily to the apartment when she left there. It's saying she at the apartment, but I'm assuming she's at their apartment. Take your oath, please. Please launch your testimony to this court with the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you out. I do. Thanks. Ms. Holt, would you need these items up, up here? I will not. Okay. May I approach? Sure. You may proceed. Thank you, Honor. Would you state your name, please, sir? Sergeant Dana Suggs. And how are you employed? The Raleigh Police Department. And how long have you been with the Raleigh Police Department? 25 years. And can you um, describe your duties and responsibilities um, with the Raleigh Police Department currently? Currently uniform line supervisor. And how long have you been um, holding that position? For the past um, three and a half years. And. Um, is there a particular district or part of the, the city that you are responsible for as a field line supervisor? Yes, ma'am. That's the Northwest District located out the uh, Glenwood Avenue corridor between the uh, Beltline and Durham County. And when you say the Glenwood Avenue corridor, um, what do you mean when you use the term corridor? That direction of the city um, where Glenwood Avenue crosses the Beltline uh, from that location all the way out to the uh, Durham city limits. So it would include Glenwood Avenue and um, kind of the area just, just immediately um, on either side of Glenwood? Yes, ma'am. With regard to um, your duties and responsibilities as a field line supervisor for, um, and that's known as the Northwest District, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you describe what, what responsibilities you have as a field line supervisor? At the beginning of the shift, we hold uh, roll calls for the line units to pass on information to them. Um, and at that point, uh, after roll call, they um, go out and, and cover their beats for that shift. Okay. And, and what, what kind of thing happens at roll call? Uh, basically, um, there's a roll call at 6 o'clock and at 7 o'clock, both morning and afternoon. Passed on information from the prior shift. And the, the watch commander, that would be someone other than yourself? Correct. But are you um, present and participating in the roll call itself? Yes, ma'am. Um, do you recall um, whether or not you were working on um, July the 19th of 2011 being a, a Tuesday evening? Yes, ma'am. We were on uh, night shift. And does that, that vary either your, your day shift or night shift? A 28-day cycle of uh, day shift, and then we go to a 28-day cycle of night shift. And night shift means that, that you come on at what time? My hours are 5.45 to 5.45, and the um, uniform units, they either come in at uh, 6 p 
or 7P or either 7A or, or, or 6A. And so basically there are kind of two waves that come on. They either come on at 6 o'clock or they come on at 7 o'clock for the night shift. That is correct. Um, and then you have roll calls at both of those those times, 6 and 7, so that you can pass on whatever information to, to that, each of those officers. That is correct, officers. yes. Um, do you recall on um, July the 19th of 2011 um, whether or not there was information about a, a missing person? Yes, ma'am. And what information, um, and, and was that information information that was passed on to the, the officers that were coming on duty? It was. It was passed on both by the uh, watch commander as well as through email. And um, do you recall exactly what, what information was, was available and was passed on regarding that missing person? Yes, ma'am. It was a missing person from Kenston, North Carolina. They had requested uh, assistance from the Raleigh Police Department, believing that her last known location was somewhere in Raleigh. And in terms of um, information that you had to give to the officers, did that include a, a name of the missing person, a description of, of that person? At that point, all we had been given was, uh, through the email, was a bolo, which be on the lookout for, um, was a photograph, a vehicle description, and, um, and where she was missing from. Um, did you later find, find out that that person was Laura Ackerson, the, the photo that you had? Yes, ma'am. And you said that you had a, a vehicle description. What, what vehicle description did you have? Oh, 2006 white Ford Focus. And what, what kind of vehicle is that? It's a small Ford um, four-door car. Did you also have a, a license tag um, that was given as, as part of that information? We did, but I do not recall the uh, actual license tag number. Okay. Um, but, but that information, um, being the picture of Ms. Ackerson as, as well as the um, description of the, the car and the license tag, that was all given out to, to the officers that were coming on duty? Yes, ma'am. In terms of um, what, why that information was provided to, to your officers that were in the, in the Northwest District, um, do you, was there any particular, was it shared throughout the city of Raleigh? It was, but it was, it was directed mainly toward our district because um, uh, information had been received through investigative means um, by researching the cell phone that the last tower, cell tower that that phone uh, operated from was in the Northwest District. And specifically, did you have information that that, that last um, call from the victim's um, phone um, was hitting off a cell tower that was located right there at, at Crabtree Valley Mall? Yes, close to the Beltline, uh, uh, 440 Beltline, near Glenwood Avenue at, at Crabtree. Um, as, as the night went on, um, did you get any additional information? We did. Okay. Um, and, and what additional information did you get? Well, initially at roll call, uh, as part of the roll call, uh, we reiterated this information with the guys and passed it on and asked them to make sure they checked all of the parking lot shopping centers and start going through the apartment complexes in our district uh, because of that information that came from the cell phone. Uh, later on that night, received a phone call from Sergeant Penny from the Rick Center, the Raleigh Intelligence Center, that uh, he provided me with basically it was a last known address. Um, or, an, or an old address of when she used to live in Raleigh. So, so initially the information was given to officers and the encouragement to check um, apartment complexes and, and shopping centers um, for, for Laura or a car, is that right? Looking for that vehicle, yes. Okay. And you indicated that um, Sergeant Penny with the Raleigh Intelligence Center, the Rick Center, had provided you some additional information. What, what is the Rick Center? It's the Raleigh Intelligence Center. It um, basically offers, it offers assistance to line units as well as detectives uh, with gathering information. Um, provide, they do research. They research the phones, research the people's backgrounds. Um, you know, if you need assistance formulating a um, photo lineup, they can assist you with that. Um, they're, they're utilized a lot throughout the shift. So the information that you got from um, Sergeant Penny, Penny and the Rick um, Intelligence Center, you said was a, a former address for the for the victim, Laura Ackerson? Yes. And um, do you recall 
what what that address was? Um, I don't recall the exact address, but I do know it was in the um, Camden Crest Apartments located off of uh, Grove Barton Road. And was that an apartment complex that um, is located within the, the Northwest District? It is. And once you got um, that information that Laura Ackerson had previously resided um, at the Camden Crest Apartment Complex, what, what did you do with that information? I contacted uh, one of the officers that was, that was patrolling in that area and passed that information on to him. Okay, and who, what officer was that? Uh, officer Walters. And did you um, give Officer Walters any um, instructions or further um, yes. requests? Yes, I asked him to uh, check that particular apartment complex and all the complexes uh, immediately around there uh, to look for that vehicle. And after making that request of Officer Walters, did you um, hear back from him? I did, uh, w probably within 30, 45 minutes uh, from contacting him sometime between 11.45, or I'm sorry, 10.45 and 11 that night, he called me back indicating that he had located that vehicle in the Camden Crest Apartments. And what did you do once you got that, that information from um, Officer Walters? I immediately responded to his location. And this again would still be um, Tuesday, July the 18th, just I think you said before, before 11 o'clock or around 11 o'clock that, that night? Uh, it was that Tuesday night, yes. And um, did you, in fact, go over to the Camden Crest apartment? I did. And what did you observe once you got there? When I got there, Officer Walters was standing by with that vehicle. Uh, it was parked in a parking space like other vehicles. Uh, it was pulled in forward, um, and he had basically secured the area to make sure no one went around the vehicle or approached it or anything. And what did you do once you got there? Contacted Sergeant Privatelli with the Major Crimes Unit. What was the purpose in, in contacting Sergeant Privatelli? They were the uh, ones who uh, basically sent out the initial information on the uh, Bolo looking for her at, uh, and the vehicle. And did um, Sergeant Privatelli um, with the, the Major Crimes Unit, did he or, or members of his team uh, actually respond to, to where you were? They did. A short time later, we just, we just stood by until they got there. Uh, Sergeant Privatelli, um, Detective Gill, and there were several other detectives that responded out there to that location. And while you waited for those officers to, to get there, did you um, or Officer Walters um, undertake to, to try to go into that vehicle or conduct any search of, um, of the vehicle? No, ma'am. We just, we just visually looked through the windows. Uh, we didn't touch the vehicle, didn't try to open it or anything. We just stood by until the uh, major crime units arrived. And did you, um, did you see anything out of the ordinary with regard to the vehicle and just looking around it or in it? No, ma'am. Um, during the time that you were there, did um, the, the crime scene people that, that actually processed the vehicle, did they show up there? Yes, ma'am. A search warrant was, was um, drawn up by one of the detectives, and uh, we stood by while they... Um, process the vehicle. Are you familiar, um, Sergeant Suggs, with the Woodfield Glen apartment complex? Yes, ma'am. And um, where is it located in, in relation to um, the um, Camden Crest um, apartment complex where the victim's white Ford Focus was located. It's the complex located immediately east of that that location. And in order to um, to travel between where the, the victim's car was found in Camden Crest apartment complex to the Woodfield Glen apartment complex, is that walking distance? It is. And um, about, can you give some idea of, of the distance? I would estimate between four and five hundred yards. And it, at that time, did you um, have any information about any significance to the Woodfield Glen apartment complex? Not at that time, no. And at that time, you did not know that that was that Woodfield Glen apartment complex is where um, 
Grant and Amanda Haynes resided? No, ma'am, not at the time we, we located the vehicle, no. You later found, knew that to be true? Later, yes. You may. So I'm handing you what has been marked for um, identification purposes as state's exhibit number 32. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. And, and what is state's exhibit number 32? It's a map overview of the area um, that has the apartment complex, Canman Crest apartment complex, as well as the um, other complex located off of Doyco Road. And does, um, does that exhibit fairly and accurately depict, you know, that, that area that's um, shown in the, in the map, the um, area off Glenwood Avenue and where these apartment complexes are, are located? Yes, ma'am. And would you be able to, to use um, State's Exhibit number 32 um, in order to point out the, the location where the, the victim's um, car was located on the 19th um, of July 2011? Yes, ma'am. At this time, I would move to introduce into evidence State's Exhibit number 32. That be received. Ask permission to, to publish it on the screen. You may. Uh, Sergeant Suggs, do you see the um, laser pointer up there on the screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, can you kind of orient us um, here with regard to, to what's, what we're being shown on this map? Yes, ma'am. This is Glenwood Avenue that basically runs well, runs from downtown all the way out to the city limits towards Durham. Okay. Um, intersection of Lynn Road here. So, so Durham is in what direction? Durham would be out west this direction here. Okay. And um, downtown would be the other direction? Yes, ma'am. It will be down. And so Crabtree Mall and, and that area would be further towards downtown? Yes, ma'am. If you were going inbound on Glenwood Avenue, in this direction here, you would be approaching um, the 440 belt line as well as uh, Crabtree Mall. You know about how far it is from, from the intersection of Lynn Road and um, Glenwood to, to Crabtree? For, oh, line? to Crabtree? I would, a uh, couple, three miles, maybe. <clears throat> um, using States Exhibit number 32, can you point out um, the, the Camden Crest apartment complex? This, this complex <clears throat> here in the entrance is off of Grove Barton, Grove, there's two entrances off of Grove Barton Road, which are right here, and this incorporates this complex here. And Grove Barton Road run, runs off of um, Lynn Road, is that right? Yes, ma'am, it goes, um, runs off of, intersects with uh, Lynn Road here, and it travels over to Pinecrest Road, which is, this is Pinecrest, and it intersects up in this area. And the, the Woodfield Glen apartment complex, are you able to point that out on the map? Uh, this is Kenman Crest. Woodfield Glen would be this area right here. Bella Park Trail. This is Doy Cope Road here. And in terms of the, the location of the victim's car, um, when you and Officer Walters um, discovered it on, the, on July the 19th, can you point that out? Uh, it would be in this area up here. There's a couple of parking spaces next to a like a little grass median and then on the other side is a row of enclosed garages. So the actual apartment buildings, where, where were they? Um, what was the closest apartment building? The closest apartment building to the vehicle would be this building here. And then there's another apartment building, which is across the parking lot there, and then oh, again over here. And this is just a wooded area back here that separates 
this complex from these townhomes over here. Remember, it's I'm going to hand you what has been marked for identification purposes as states exhibits 33, 34, and 35. I just ask you to take a moment to look at those. Um, do you recognize states exhibits 33, 34, and 35? Yes, ma'am. That is the photographs of the vehicle that also Walters located. And the state's exhibits 33, 34, and 35 um, depict, the fo uh, depict the victim's um, forward focus um, as it was discovered um, there at the parking place in Camden Crest um, apartment complex? Yes, ma'am. And would those photographs assist you in illustrating your testimony with regard to um, what you observed with regard to the victim's car? Yes, ma'am. At this time, the state would move to introduce into evidence state's exhibit 33, 34, and 35. Little bit ask permission to you briefly. Sergeant Suggs on State Exhibit 33 is up on the screen and can you um, describe what's depicted here? Yes ma'am, it is a um, photograph of a 2006 Ford Focus. And the, the license tag that um, is exhibited there, did that match the information that you had gotten um, earlier on the, the BOLO? Yes, ma'am. And enabled you to identify this car as of interest? That is correct. Um, with regard to um, this car and how it's located in, in that parking spot, you had indicated on the earlier map that there was a kind of median grassy area. Can you, um, can you see that in this photo? You can see a portion of it. It's, it's area right here like the main the main street would be over here and this is like a grassy area and then there's another like circle street that comes down here and to the left would be the um, garages and to the right would be the main apartment building and was there another car um, parked next to um, this Yes, ma'am. There was a, a vehicle located in this um, space directly next to hers. And at that time of night, the whole parking lot was basically full and very little. There was, I don't think we saw but one or two people, pedestrians, the entire time we were out there because of the time of night it was. And by this time, it's getting, getting on towards midnight? By the time these pictures were taken, it was, we were probably 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning because we had to wait for the search warrant. Um, State Exhibit 34. What is, what is shown in this um, photograph? This same vehicle, just a different angle, the uh, curb, uh, grassy, bushy, median area here, pulled into the parking space. Um, you can see the other vehicle that was parked next to it that um, case laying on that vehicle that belonged to uh, CCBI and then, and then the and then the apartment I'm sorry the uh, garages are are over here okay, so basically we're just two two parking spaces in this area before the garages would begin uh, yes ma'am that's correct and so the CCBI those are the people that um, came and processed the vehicle that's the, the suitcase that's on top of this other vehicle yes their um their work kit <laughs> And State's Exhibit number 35, is this just a, a view from the, the front of the car, kind of um, looking back back towards the rear of the car? That is correct. And appears to be a, a vehicle behind it. Is that also a CCBI vehicle? Yes, ma'am, that is. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. All right. It's um, 1130. We haven't had the morning break. I think it would be a good time to stop for the break. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, obviously you haven't heard it all. Keep an open mind. Don't form or express any opinion about the guilt or innocence of the defendant or any matter in controversy. Be careful about your conduct. Uh, follow my previous instructions. Won't we take about, I don't know, 15 minutes? If you want to go get some water or coffee or something like that, uh, bring it back. You, you're free to do that. 
I'll leave you notes in the chair, and I'll see you all reassemble in the jury room in about 15 minutes. Thank you.